Lovely. I think that's the majority of people who have signed up. We'll probably have a few more, but just before we start, I will go through the housekeeping that I usually do. So uh, the lecture is going to go on for 20 minutes. During that time, if you do come up with any questions, then please do just place them in the chat, which you can find uh, on the lower bar of your screen. Um, and then at the end, I'll be doing a, a 10 minute Q&A with Sarah. So uh, yeah, just make sure that you place them in there and make sure that you are addressing it to everybody. And uh, if you could just make sure that you're, um, you're on mute and just be aware that this is being recorded. So um, you may want to turn off your screen. Lovely. I think that is everybody. Okay, so hello everybody. Thank you for turning up for another brilliant subject today. Um, I'm really pleased that Sarah is joining us. Sarah was in fact um, the archivist when I was at university at Penryn and I've learned so much from her. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, so there's a few more people coming in, just going to admit them. Welcome everybody who's just joined. Um, so just to remind everybody to keep your screens on mute and you may want to turn off your video just to be aware that this is being recorded. Okay, so today another brilliant talk. We have uh, Sarah who's the Archivist and the Special Collections Officer for Falmouth University and also for the University of Exeter on the Penryn campus. Uh, today is really special for our project and, and really unique because it is about collaborating with, um, with other organisations, but also with um, bringing together the audiovisual elements and really making the most out of them. So I'm really excited that we're going to be launching uh, this gallery of maritime church images from the Charles Wolfe slide collection uh, today. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Sarah. Sarah, are you ready to screen share? I am indeed. I will just, um, now I've sort of said hello and seen um, everybody, I will turn my camera off because the way my setup is I can't have to look at the slides, I have to look over here and that's incredibly rude because you're all over there. So um, I will come back later, but I am still here. <laughs> so hopefully... That's something like it, is it? I might just need whoop. There we go. Can um, Vicky, could you just give me a thumbs up if that's looking like you're expecting? Wonderful. That's great. Um, so, uh, you yeah, know, good afternoon, everybody. Just, oh, just afternoon, isn't it? Um, thank you for all coming along. I'm slowly getting used to delivering sessions online in this way um so it's nice to kind of see the mini versions of you but it's a shame not to all, all be in the room together but um thank you for all being here so as vicky says i'm sarah jane um i should say jane is my surname um because if you've heard me speak before now i always point that out but it does you know, cause huge amounts of confusion and i'm archivist and special collections officer at the penring campus so we hold um, unique and special collections that support teaching and research of both Falmouth University and the University of Exeter. And a number of these have already been used as part of the research for the Cornwall Maritime Churches project. Um, in particular, the Canon Adams Index for Medieval Churches, which I know several of the volunteers have found to be really useful. But today I wanted to introduce to you our Charles Wolf slide collection. This is one of our most popular collections, featuring 13,500 of images of Cornwall, um, taken 1953 to 1982, and has great potential to be used, excuse me, uh, great potential to be used as a resource for the study of maritime churches in Cornwall. So while I'll give you some background to Wolf and to his work, I make no apology really that much of this talk will be a simple slideshow of some of the highlights. Um, in many ways, continuing Wolf's original intentions for these images, albeit in a digital form. Um, the first part isn't ma uh, maritime churches related, and I hope you'll forgive me for that, but it does give you some important context, I think, to the images. There'll be a chance for questions at the end, and I think Vicky's going to help us manage that. Um, it's really no chore at all to share these images with you today. Um, 
across the archive team there's a real affection for the collection and indeed you know for Mr Wolf himself uh, so no doubt you'll hear me declare you know um, more than once that a certain image is my favourite image <laughs> um, it's really quite hard to choose with this um, it's such a fantastic collection so before um, we get stuck into showing you the images I do just want to take a few minutes to answer the question you know who was Charles Wolfe Very often when I give these uh, talks, one of the participants might have known Charles Wolfe, who we can see here now. Um, so I'd be really happy to, to hear about that if you, if you did know him. Um, but for those of you who aren't familiar, um, originally from Devon, Charles, moved, moved, Charles Wolfe moved to Cornwall in the 1930s. He was trained as a pharmacist and then came to Cornwall as one of the, young, as one of the youngest ever managers for Boots the Chemist. Um, first at Hambourne and then latterly at Newquay which then became his home for the next 50 plus years. Mr Wolfe always had an interest in photography and it soon became apparent he would need to make a choice between his management career at Boots and being a photographer. So after initially setting up a dark room at home, um, he found chest premises in Chester Road in Newquay. So as you can see here, he um, set up a shop that ran, um, running a business where he took family photographs, uh, portraits, wedding photos, um, selling postcards and photographic ac accessories. You can see here some of the services that he offered and this includes hand tinting that we can see in use here and studio portraits like these. And interestingly we keep kind of finding connections between our various archive collections that we have the privilege of managing. Um, and we discovered that this early uh, portrait of playwright Nick Dark, whose archive we also have, um, was taken by uh, Charles Wolfe. I think this is about the uh, 60s time here, isn't it? It's great. So Wolfe was also well known for the postcards that he produced, and this was both for the tourist market, which featured local landmarks, um, and those he produced for hotels. And these can still be found today, kind of with postcard sellers, car boot sales, and so on. Um, but we think we might be creating a bit of a demand for them um, as we've driven up the price a bit. I think we're maybe being too keen when we're a bit too enthusiastic when we find one. Charles Wolfe was you know, by nature a curious man and um, Institute of Cornish Studies own Professor Charles Thomas uh, described him as a man who was interested in everything. And that's really kind of clear from his collection. So alongside his professional works we've just seen, he was uh, very active in the Newquay Old Cornwall Society, the Cornwall Archaeological Society, Royal Institution of Cornwall, and was made a bard um, of Gorsef Kerno in 1957, as this show was here just in the middle. His bardic, uh, his bardic name was um, Dendelians, which I think means man of pictures, which I think is lovely. So I think it's fair to say that Wolf really fell in love with Cornwall and became absorbed um, in its history, customs, landscape, and used photography to capture and importantly share with others the beauty and diversity of Cornwall. And this is what our slide collection um, is really about. So it's his non-professional work, um, if you like, so he has opposed to unprofessional, but the work he completed at evenings and weekends when he would travel around uh, Cornwall with his colleague Joyce Greenham, and you see here, you know, doing just that, capturing Cornwall. And Charles and Joyce collaborated over 30 years to capture these 30 and a half thousand images of um, Cornish landscapes, flora, people, customs, events, archaeology, the built environment, the list goes on. Um, by today's standards, the equipment was basic. Um, and they would be out in all weathers, you know, sometimes going to really great lengths, as we can see here, to capture these images. And with the proliferation of digital images and the ease at which we can all now you know, constantly document everything around us via our, our phones, it's worth just pausing to consider what an achievement that is. You know, 13 and a half thousand images, and certainly the physicality of the collection. You know, all packed and meticulously numbered and indexed um, in these you know, lovely wooden slide boxes. It really acts a testament to that. To see them on mass in the store, you know, it's really quite, quite something. 
but tempting as it would be to kind of simply show off my favourite images and certainly need no excuse to do that, a more accessible route into the collection is to consider the themes that are documented by Charles Wolfe. And I'm going to start with the idea of changes to the built environment. Mr Wolfe deliberately set out to document the change that he saw around him and there are many types of change to the build, built environment that he captured. The first one being those buildings kind of in decline, um, either due to age or neglect, um, like such as these cottages here in Trebarworth, or perhaps because they'd fallen out of use, such as this chapel, um, not a maritime location, I should add. Um, and often we see change as the result of action or incident. So here we can see the 17th century Red Lion Hotel on Biscayne Street in Truro in 1955, just on, on the left. And then some years later, we see the impact of the lorry having collided with the building. Rather controversially, the hotel was never restored. Um, it was rebuilt. Um, it's where the co-op is now in, in Truro, a big 60s uh, concrete facade. Um, it is immortalised and pulled up though, if, if you look for it. And then we also, oh, apologies, we also see um, in the collection the possibility to view change as part of progress, if you like. You know, as Cornwall you know, moves into the future. So here we see the original Barclays Bank in Newquay in 1972, the beginning of the demolition of it a number of years later, and then its subsequent replacement with a modern flat roof construction. And also the collection documents those areas that have seen very little change, so unchanged, if you like. Um, so although the shop fronts might have altered, architecturally, you know, this road in Falmouth um, that many of you will be familiar with is little different to you know, nearly 60 years ago. But as well as the buildings, there are many um, aspects of the Cornish environment documented in the Charles Wolfe collection, which brings us to our next theme. Uh, local events. Images here range from the less well known, such as Cornish wrestling, shown here at, at St Q in 1959, hurling in St Cullum in 1962. I really like this one, a big, this set of images. I was thinking it looked a bit like a spot the ball competition. <laughs> it's obviously just kind of gone that way. Um, I think where Mr Wolf would have been standing might have been a bit precarious with all those men running towards him. Also midsummer bonfires. Coronation events in 1953. And even the Royal Cornwall show. And of course there are many images of more well-known events such as Obios and Florida Day. Lots of lovely sets of those across many years. Um, Mr. Wolf kind of revisited uh, those celebrations each year and photographed them. So, as well as these images of what we might think of as leisure activities, Wolf also documented kind of more work-based activities, and in particularly, in particular, industry and agriculture. One of my favourite images is this of Trebellum Farm at harvest time in 1956. And re returning to that idea about change, there are other images um, later in the collection that show a combine harvester being used at the same farm. And then this, this image of a cattle drive up on Bobbin Moor is particularly lovely. And then, of course, lots of images of fishing. You can see here packing fish at Cadgeworth. And a lovely set of colourful images of daffodil gathering. Um, what's interesting about these is that the daffs were picked in flower um, at this point in the 60s. You know, but as markets and transportation to market and so on has changed, now of course we all buy them still really tight in, in bud. And of course, through the period that Wolf um, documents the 1950s to the 1980s, tourism really became our dominant industry in Cornwall. And there are various images of that, including you know ones like this of kind of really packed beaches um, around the Newquay area. And it's really the images of people that, to me, are kind of at the heart of this collection. And a number of real kind of characters captured by Mr. Wolf, 
you know, such as this chap who um, tantalisingly described by Mr. Wolf in the index simply as Taylor. Uh, we've worked on a project with the Cornish Guardian to showcase some of these images and they've been able to identify um, him as George Keys, who is a local build, boat builder and was actually boatman for Frederick Browning at Bedinnock, who was, of course, was the husband of Daphne de Moray. And then this little girl, another favourite of mine, um, we haven't been able to trace her, unfortunately, but this one was taken um, around 1953, so one of the earliest images in the collection, um, possibly at Polly Joke, we think. Really lovely. And Fisherman at Cadgeware. I think this one's crying out for a caption competition. <laughs> um, and then the ladies of the Newquay Old Cornwall Society who were on a day trip out in 1968. There's lots of lovely hats in the collection, I should say. And finally, again, another favourite of mine um, is Mr. Varco at De Melzer in 1976. I think he's just kind of captures, he's a quintessential Cornish old boy, isn't he? You know, he stood at his gate telling a tale, you know, what accounts for that smile, I think we'll never quite know. And then, of course, what brings us here today is the topic of maritime churches. So there are over 1,200 images of churches and chapels in the Wolf Collection. Um, as you would expect, covering all regions in Cornwall, from Launceston to Land's End. Wolf himself had various categories for his own index to the slide, um, it, many of which don't relate to those them themes that um, I've just been talking about, but churches was one of them. So this topic was something that Wolf you know, really recognised as being important himself. Um, sorry, excuse me. Um, and it's very much like yeah, alongside his interest um, in archaeology and history, there's kind of another uh, a number of aspects to his documentation of churches, um, be it views, graveyards, headstones, architectural details, stained glass windows, um, interiors, you know, everything that you would kind of expect to enable you to read a church um, Charles Wolfe had captured. So it's only expected that there are um, nearly 100 images of the maritime churches that are featured in, in this project um, that are in, contained within the Wolf collection. So to give you a bit of a teaser, I'm just going to give you a, a slight run through here. We have the church um, at Tintagel, this one from 1974. A close up of uh, the doorways, the St Anthony and Roseland. St Justin Roseland. St Glebius in Penryn. St Windwallow. Lovely um, detail of the roof there, of a Cornish barrel roof. St Windwallow at Land Wednack. St Sonora at Zena. This one's really nice with all the hay sticks in the background. And then Paul Church as well. So you might notice that unfortunately there aren't any for Falmouth or Tower Drive, who I know, you know those churches are also included in this project. So while the um, Charles Wolfe collection is catalogued um, and uh, it's also digitised, unfortunately we don't quite yet have the digital platform that brings those two sets of data together online. So instead, to, in, to enable you to access um, the images of maritime churches, we've put together an online exhibition um, of them. So hopefully the technology will work and I can click out here. I realise you probably won't be able to click on this, but I will put the link into the chat later. Um, and I think Vicky's also going to get that up on the project website. So this then takes you to our across, um, web page on the library website. There we go, uh, where we have a um, section, growing section for our online exhibitions. And then that then takes you through. There we go. I would just need to play because it knows it's me. This is the the the, uh, the site that you would the page that you would land on. So 
this gives you the opportunity to really scroll through kind of in more detail and um, depending how closely you look it might take you about 20 minutes perhaps more um you know, for, for, yeah this you're, you're our target audience who so i would expect kind of <laughs> looking at these in more detail so um yeah it depends how closely you look about how long it takes you to go through but there is then a section um for each of the churches uh, that i've just mentioned and then here it then gives you the opportunity so some you know will look you know kind of in small form and how we've presented them but then you can just kind of click through and it brings them up uh, bigger and it gives you the opportunity to kind of scroll through um, and there is a little bit of information kind of um, on each church as well that we've then put in um, so big thanks to my uh, colleague Carol who's um, I know here with us today has done an awful lot of work putting this together and we're really pleased with it it's um you know, as we're all shifting to more emphasis to operate online, um, thinking about how we hosted online exhibitions is something that we've been working quite hard on over the last few weeks. So um, we're really pleased with how this one's come about. There you go. So I will let you um, look at that all um, more in your own time. So there we have it, a bit of a whistle stop tour um, of our Charles Wolfe slide collection. I'll happily take some questions now, um, if you like, and if that kind of is, allows us to work. I can't, I, because I've dropped down my box. Let's see if I can get you back up. <laughs> we can always keep that, that just showing if you'd like. Okay, lovely. Yeah, um, that's great. <laughs> thank you so much, Sarah, for that. I think everybody would agree, such a brilliant resource. And I, I personally want to thank you and, and Carol for, for putting so much work into that and finding those associations with our project. It's, it's a brilliant resource. And I think all of our students are going to be really super excited to jump into them. Um, just before um, I start taking questions, so if everybody would like to start adding their questions to uh, the group chat, which you can find on your bar below, could I just kick off with asking if students were to use these images, what should they be considering? Sarah, hello? Oh, we may have a problem with the sound. Uh, oh, Sarah, I think you've been muted. Um, if you go to your, I may be able to unmute you, no I can't, if you go to um, the bottom bar Sarah and on the left hand side there should be a mute button, you just select unmute. Oh, are we struggling? Um, while Sarah is working that out, I think it may just actually be on Zoom, Sarah, uh, on your bottom bar. There should be a mute icon. Can you hear me now? Is that Lovely. better? Yeah, can Sorry. You? <laughs> Sorry, I'm learning with this. It's new, new to all of us. I tell you what does it is when you share your screen, everything else disappears and that kind of it goes a bit wrong with them. But um, yeah, I got as far as your question. You say if the students want to and I, I yeah, couldn't hear any more than that. So. I'll, I'll say that again then. Um, if students were to use uh, these brilliant photos within their research, what should yeah. they be considering or taking into consideration? So copyright is something to think about. Um, and we can, uh, so in the online exhibition, our contact details are at the end there, so that if they want copies of those images to, to use in any way, then they can get in touch with us and we can provide them copies from there. Um, we can also then give, you know, kind of appropriate guidance about citation and, you know, all of those things about how to reference properly or, or certainly the information that then can be used alongside the appropriate, you know, kind of formats for that and so on. Um, we are really fortunate that the um, Wolf family have given us copyright to this collection. So it means we're much freer in what we can do with that. And I think that's really kind of like a testament to, um, well it perpetuates, doesn't it, Charles Wolfe's you know, original ideas for this collection. He, one thing I didn't mention was that he, he would give slideshows at local hotels and for the, all the local groups and so on that he um, worked with. 
so for us to be able to kind of share the images in this way and have them used you know it really um i think it continues you know the aspirations that he had and the intentions when he was taking the images lovely thank you another question from barbara uh, she'd like to know how to access the material that isn't to do with the maritime project as she's actually working on a phd phd to do with may day very exciting mm. yes um we've got lots of things you might be interested in then barbara um the best thing to do is to drop us an email on our contact details which i can get the um, i've got my sound back i'll get the um powerpoint back up but um the our contact details are at the end um which you should just drop us an email and then get in touch we we are working hard to get the rest of the collection up online and in the meantime now we've got our head around these this the kind of formats for online exhibitions and so on i hope that we can get a few more of those up but in the most basic way we can send you images of the things that you're interested in um, how that worked before was that you would need to come into the reading room and then look at those on a, a computer you know in, with us on site but obviously we're not able to provide that um, at the moment so that might be coming back again as things change and when we open up so yeah just get in touch and then we can kind of you know do do what we can around that but yeah, we, you won't be disappointed around um, those images from AJ. Andy also asks, how does a member of the public access um, the collection? Yeah, just in exactly the same way, Andy. So we make no distinction between um, our staff, students, you know, other researchers from universities, um, or local historians are interested, or just somebody that wants to come and have a look. Uh, you know, that's, uh, I think, the technology allowing that kind of um, more informal browsing is is coming um, but you know that isn't to say that um, you always need to specifically know exactly what you want to see you know anybody can get in touch and say oh you know I think you might have something on this or what have you got around a certain thing and we yeah we um, yeah we're always really happy it's it's an important part of our role about getting this, this collection these all of our collections out there but we're always really happy to do that so yeah please just drop us a line Andy has just added to his question is there an online catalogue Sarah there is yes and you can get to that from our website as well so yeah there's a link there to that so yeah the catalogue's all online and that will give you an idea um but what's so frustrating and certainly with all our digital expectations we all have now is that of course you click on the, the description of the image and it is just that it's the description it doesn't bring up the image as well um but a, a great kind of lockdown project for us we're working with our digital humanities colleagues at the Stratton campus for Exeter um, to develop an interface so we're currently um, deep in the subject tagging um, phase of this which uh, yeah the kind of taxonomy of that and all the hierarchies um, is proving quite complex um, particularly the digital mapping um, which is going to be fab because it will be a digital map of Cornwall with all the images geolocated on them. But for Trenant's Gardens, say in Newquay, let alone Newquay in a whole, yeah, there's thousands. Um, so kind of getting that visually right on a map that doesn't then end up with you know loads of pins everywhere. We kind of have to work out a hierarchy for that. Um, I can talk about archive kind of cataloguing stuff at length so you should probably stop me there but um yeah it's it's on its way so i think we can all appreciate the metadata and all of that side of archives that is an extremely complex process so yeah. thank you for doing yeah. that and, and, and going through that process for us so um louise has also asked is it just slides you have what about the negatives um so um the slide would have for these images the slide would have been the negative um, because that's how the the image was taken. It was taken on a particular um, Kodachrome slide film, which gives you this lovely, and you can see it kind of on this image in, in particular, this lovely kind of like glow and that kind of light. You know, for the 50s, this, you know, to get um, colour images right through this period, you know, is quite unusual, but that's particularly because of um, him taking this on slide film and using the, the technology that he did. Um, Royal Cornwall Museum and um, uh, Newquay Old Cornwall Society hold sets of his prints. Um, as far as I know, they aren't, they are more 
along the lines of his professional work. So there's a number of albums of prints of those portraits and so on. Um, but yeah, we, we have the slide is the negative in, in, in this case. Can I also ask, how did the collection actually end up at the university? Mm. So it was donated to the Institute. We've got a number of collections that came to us via the Institute of Cornish Studies. So we've got records relating to Mebby and Kerno, um, collections from a number of different bards, um, things relating to um, Cornish nationalist movement, all, all that type of thing. Um, and this was, the, the Charles Wolfe collection was donated to ICS um, shortly after his death. But particularly around, at that time, there was an arm of the Institute of Cornish Studies called the Cornish Biological Records Unit. Um, and it was particularly because of that interest that the Institute of Cornish Studies had quite strongly then that this collection was donated. What I haven't shown you today is, is any of the thousands of images of wildflowers um, that's there. So it's quite interesting that, that the um, value, if you like, that the original deposit was around, was around these kind of natural history images. And then we've, you know, I remember a colleague many years ago when I first you know, started at the university and said, oh yeah, that's all those boxes of, of wildflower photos, aren't they? You know, who, who's going to be very interested in that? Um, yeah, when we really kind of start delving into that, we realize there's all these kind of, you know, different themes and everything to that. So um, yeah, but a whole other talk around the natural history images there, I think. Um, and lots of unidentified flowers, should anybody wish to lend their expertise in that? And on that note, I, mean, I don't know if we, are there any more questions, Vicky? Uh, Barbara has also asked, do you also have the George Ellis collection? No, we don't, that's at Crescent Kerr, no. Yeah, it's interesting you bring up George Ellis because I often think the two, it would be interesting to do a project around, you know, the, 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 I think they're quite fairly comparable, but of course George Ellis was um, photographing for the local paper so in terms of intent um, and motivation and, and how yeah, we've got comparable images of similar things, but it's quite interesting to kind of see how they're different and to think about that documentary nature and how both of the photographers worked and what they were planning to do with the images and what motivated them to take them um, is quite different. Um, but yeah, interesting that you, yeah, we, we've often kind of said that, but Carol and, and myself, that... Um, it's a kind of companion collection in a way. Um, Thank you, Sarah. Well, um, you're very welcome. One thing I did want to, if we have time and there are no more questions, I've got a couple of unidentified churches I'd be happy to show you. Yes, please do. If anybody, six minutes, yeah. so go ahead. Okay, lovely. Well, um, I can always put these out on Twitter afterwards. But if anybody's got any ideas, so with 13,500 images, you can imagine that even you know, a tiny less than half a percent unidentified or or mislabeled or so on it still ends up with quite a substantial number of images mm. um, and looking through we have got three relating to churches and chapels again mind many more on um wildflowers but there's this one i wish gary anybody... was here he'd be brilliant at this ah uh, um no one's um, mentioned anything I'm afraid I don't I, I'm not familiar with it it's it, I mean it's it's instantly no. recognizable but also fairly generic isn't it it's like yeah you know, um we've spent a lot of time kind of looking for unidentified images stalking google maps and getting down to details like the shape of the windows and the, you know, the orientation and that kind of thing Barbara has um, just said fourth chapel near Land's End St Berrien so ah. wow, we have one thank you Barbara lovely Good. wonderful thank you um i'm just writing that down quickly <laughs> I'll also, um, just whilst you're putting up the other one um i know that louise said that she couldn't access the sound and i saw a few of you having trouble i am going to be re-uploading this to youtube so uh, and that will have the full sound on it so if anyone wants um, to go back to anything in this slideshow then that will be available Apologies, but the internet, as many of us are kind of finding, aren't we, in rural areas, our internet here isn't amazing. So it could also, uh, hopefully uh, Vicky's recording is um, is okay, but if it turns out that it was the sound not being sent from this end, then we can always do something and be recorded or, or something like that. Or please do get in touch if there's any bits that fall out that you, you want me to kind of fill in any gaps. 
Um, is also interesting, we said, sorry to cut you up, Sarah. Uh, Joe Mattingly is also um, a very good person to talk to about churches. So um, I do have Joe Mattingly on Twitter, actually, so I can always give you her details. If yeah, I know Jo, I haven't seen her for some time, but when she was involved with um, me as a museum development officer, so yeah, no, Jo, I for that. And this one is tantalising, we just um, listed as derelict chapel. And we don't, we think it's, well, the, the images are taken, they're in the same run, so I think it's, it's, it seems to be the same place from two different angles. Um, whether it is a chapel or not, I mean, it, it seems to be, but um, there are... No one's said anything yet. Um, mm. I'm not sure, I'm afraid. No, it's really, we feel like, like I said, Google Maps has been amazing for this because you can kind of, particularly where there's anything with a road, because then you can kind of do the street view mm. thing and then kind of really get in and try to sit. So we've managed to find a number, but I will put them out on Twitter. Um, and then if anyone wants to spend a bit more time looking at them more closely, you'd be very welcome. Um, but we'll just leave you there with our, um, obviously, if there's any more questions, but uh, yeah, happy to um, hear from you, you know, via um, email. Um, there's also the link to our website there. And from there, you can get onto the um, catalogue and also to the online exhibitions page. Um, we are still, we think, getting voicemails coming to us through uh, through the email system. <laughs> so, you know, it's worth still putting the, the phone number up there, but certainly email is, is probably the best way at the moment while we're all working from home. Um, but very much do get that message, do want to get that message out there that our collections aren't exclusively for staff and students. Um, and that's really important. You know, we've, we've got, although broadly we, we our collecting remit is around supporting teaching and research for Exeter and for Falmouth. Um, access is, is about much more than that. And these this collection in particular was was created to be seen, you know, so so anything we can do to facilitate that is is a privilege. I would urge everybody therefore to uh, make the most out of that brilliant access. Um, and yes, please do get in contact with Sarah. Um, so thank you so much for today, Sarah. I'm just going to quickly share my screen and see if I can show you all um, how to get onto, <clears throat> excuse me, how, oh, I might be able to see this, how to get onto our website. Oh, it's not, I think today is the day where technology is finally failing me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was bound to happen at some point. But um, if everybody uh, would like to hear more about what Sarah is doing and also see the gallery online, I will place some links. But if you would like to go to www.cornishmaritimechurches.co.uk, uh, that would be great. And you can go to news, which is um, which you can find at the top. Lovely. Thank you so much, Sarah. <laughs> Here we are, this is our project home. Uh, so news and then uh, meetings and events, lovely. And then if you just scroll down, you can see what else we have coming up this week, but also uh, on, yeah, that's lovely. On Thursday, yeah. which is today, um, at the bottom, I'm gonna place some more links, which can take you uh, to all of Sarah's uh, pages on the Exeter and Falmouth website. Lovely. It's so probably just at the bottom of here. You mean, yeah, yeah. this bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. lovely. Yeah. And so look for me stood on a stool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> lovely photo. So thank you so much, everybody, for turning up today. I think our chat is going to die in a moment. So uh, please do go to.